Good morning, and welcome to another edition of Inquisition Update. My name's Tom Fress, and I'll be your host for the next hour. You're listening to FirstAmendmentRadio.com. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. I've uh, been anxious ever since the weekend to get started uh, with a new week here at Inquisition Update in our reading and discussion of the book Rome and Civil Liberty by James A. Wiley, Protestant historian, thinker, truly a Reformed Christian, a Bible-believing Christian. And at the time of the writing of this book, he finds his country, Great Britain, courting Rome again after she had been liberated from papal tyranny England was once again courting the horrors of the Roman Catholic Church, granting religious liberty to Roman Catholics. They had seemingly and inexplicably lost their knowledge of what happens when you give religious liberty to Roman Catholics. The first thing they do is take over the government and strip you of your civil rights and become a tyrant over you. Roman Catholic canon law demands that the Pope is the replacement of Christ on earth, that he is Christ's sole representative on earth, and that all education must come from the papacy, And all law must come from the papacy. The papacy, rather, replaces the divine law, which is codified in the scriptures, and replaces it with a system of law called Roman Catholic canon law, which is human law. As more than that, it is antichrist law. You see, the Pope not only claims himself to be king of kings and lord of lords, but God on earth, and that he may, at his whim, dispense with the divine law and change that law, and that he becomes the sole arbiter of law in the world. Now, James A. Wiley is cognizant of this, and he is describing this horror to us in the book as we, as, as we read along. Now, because we were disrupted over the weekend, I want to gather up my listeners' thoughts, and I will continue where we uh, uh, ahead, um, uh, retreating a bit to gather up our thoughts with the points that James A. Wiley is, is going to make. And so I will retreat to the very bottom paragraph on page 12, if you're following along in your own copy of the book. This is very important information. This serves the basis of what he will discuss in further, further along in this, in this uh, chapter and in the rest of the book. We must understand the difference between the divine law and the law of man. The divine law is called by James A. Wiley. He uses a Latin term. I hate Latin, but I'll use it because he used it. The divine law is called jus divinum. Jus divinum. J-U-S-D-I-V-I-N-U-M. Okay? And as we go along... Once I know that you under, you 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 catch that word, I'll replace it with the divine law. That's what you and I understand. I hate Latin. And the 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 law of man is called jus humanum. Jus humanum. You see the root word human in there. Jus humanum. That's Roman Catholic canon law. That's the Pope's law. That's the law that the papacy insists replaces or augments, for lack of a better term, God's law. And it is anti-Christian law. It strips man of the liberty whereby Christ hath made us free and replaces it with human tyranny. Okay? We're talking about the difference between Christ and liberty and the papacy and tyranny. 
Christ and liberty, Antichrist and tyranny. Okay? Two systems of law. They're easily distinguishable if one is familiar with his Bible and if one is familiar with history. Now, beginning in the last, full, uh, the last paragraph on page 12, James A. Wiley says, there is a us divinum, that is a divine law, at the foundation of everything that is true and good. There is a use divinum at the foundation of science. The divine law is the foundation of science. He says, for all true science is just an induction of the laws and the facts of nature, which are the ordination of God. God created all things. He created the laws that, that hold everything in its place. The power that holds an atom together, the, the law that, that keeps the oceans and the waters separate from the land, the laws that keep the stars in their place in the heavens, the law that causes a tree to, to bloom in the spring and to bear its fruit in the summer and to go back to sleep in the wintertime. God defined all of those laws. That is the just law of God, and it is the foundation of everything. James A. Wiley is describing God as the sole lawgiver in the universe. And he is. And if anyone tries to usurp God's rightful throne as the lawgiver, he has become God's enemy. That's the point that James A. Wiley is trying to make. And who is God's enemy but the papacy? He says, all true science is just an induction of the laws and the facts of nature, which are the ordination of God. It's God's business. Now he says, there is a use duinum at the foundation of all good government. For what is government but an induction or a codification of the laws and facts of society, which too are the ordination of God. All right? So God is the just foundation of a just law in the, in the societies of men. Now, he says, there is a, ju a jus duinum at all tr in all true theology. For what is theology but just an induction of the laws and the facts of the Bible? Not law and tradition, as Rome says, but the Bible, which are the revelation of God. The Reformation, the Protestant Reformation, was a return. It was a return to the jus duinum of God in opposition to the jus duinum of man, which in fact is nothing else but a jus humanum. Okay? The Protestant Reformation was a return to the law of God. Because what did the Protestant Reformation overthrow? It overthrew the papal authority over Europe. It overthrew the Pope's canon law. And by extension, it caused the overthrow of all the governments of Europe, wherever the Protestant Reformation was accepted because all the kings of Europe were, were picked by the Pope and brought to power and sustained in power, and if, and if the Pope didn't like them anymore or they defied the authority of the Pope, the so-called divine authority of the Pope, then the Pope overthrew them and replaced them with a king that would obey him. And every king was expected to impose Roman Catholic canon law upon its society. And that's why we determined that era, era of history to be the Dark Ages, because the Bible was suppressed, God's law of liberty was suppressed, nobody knew it because nobody ever read it. The Bible, as it existed at the time, was perverted, and it was 
it, it was perverted by Rome, and it was written in Latin. The people couldn't read Latin. They weren't allowed to read the Bible in the first place. And the and and the Pope kept the Bible, kept the monopoly, as it were, on the Scriptures, <clears throat> as they existed in the Roman Catholic Church. One could hardly call them the Scriptures, but nonetheless, God was was a secret that the Roman Catholic hierarchy kept to itself, and therefore, because of the ignorance of the people, they got away with saying that they were God's representatives on earth, and that the laws that they that they bound the people to obey was divine law. But when they began to read the scriptures for themselves at the time of the Protestant Reformation, they realized that there was a that God had a law which was entirely contradistinctive to the papal canon law. And therefore they came to the logical and and biblical and historical and prophetic truth that the pope is no lawgiver at all. He is the lawless one. He is the one that overthrew God's law and replaced it with his own. He replaced the use duinum of God with the use humanum of the Antichrist, of the Pope. And this is what James A. Wiley finds it essential to remind his, his people in Great Britain about. And this is the very thing that we need to be reminded of today. There is a law of God. It is established in the heavens. It is established in the laws of nature. We are guided by that law through our conscience. But there is also a human law. That human law that we thought was destroyed at the time of the Protestant Reformation, it has come to power. It is not the Jews to mean them. It is the jus humanum, and the United States has adopted Roman Catholic canon law and is now imposing Roman Catholic canon law on the people, and that causes us to lose the liberty whereby Christ has made us free. We are no longer the governors, the people of of this country are no longer the governors of this nation. We have been usurped by that ancient Roman power. And our government now responds to that ancient Roman power, that use humanum, and God's law can go fly a kite as far as they're concerned. And so can our liberties, because now they see themselves as the divine rulers, and we are the people that are to be ruled by them. Okay? No more liberty. In a Roman world, there's no liberty. <clears throat> okay, the, the 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 liberty whereby Christ hath made us free, that liberty that He paid with His own blood is now taken away from us, and we are made to be tyrannized by this Roman tyrant. And James A. Wiley is say is saying the same thing is happening at Brit in Britain at the time of the writing of this book. That's why this book is a perfect follow-on to the previous book we read, The Global Vatican by Francis Rooney. And it is most critical for us to understand in our day and age. Today, James A. Wiley is experiencing the same threat in Great Britain at the time of the writing of this book that we are experiencing in the United States today. At the time, Britain was free had been free ever since Queen Elizabeth. Protestantism had been established. The use duinum had been established in Britain. And now at the time of the writing of this book, Rome is making inroads again, wanting to build Roman Catholic churches, wanting to to build again nunneries and monasteries, and then to divide England once again into Roman Catholic dioceses over which a bishop from the Roman Catholic Church ruled. And he was warning Great Britain that if this system continues to build, it will overthrow the legitimate Protestant government, the Queen and the Parliament of Great Britain. And that's exactly what's happened in our country today. Certainly, anyone who's been a regular listener to Inquisition Update can now understand 
why this is the most perfect book to to succeed the the reading of the global vatican and also a perfect book to describe us precisely what is going on in our country today he says there is a use duinum at the foundation of all good government in other words any government that is not built upon the law of god and is built upon the law of man that is the man of sin roman catholic canon law it's not good government that's what you could take from this listen to it again make sure i haven't twisted his words there is a use do we move at the foundation of all good government for what is government but an induction or a codification of the laws and facts of society which too are the ordination of god so all good government observes the use duinum of god god's law that is good government so what kind of a government do we have that throws aside the use duinum the divine law and replaces it with use humanum that law founded upon man a man the man of sin in rome roman catholic canon law it is not good government just as plain as day what james a wiley is telling us and the very time of of his writing he saw the protestant queen the crown and the protestant parliament of great britain under a threat that they didn't even comprehend in their attempt to make religious liberty for roman catholics after they had once been thrown out of great britain and what has happened in the united states vatican the constitution of the united states granted religious liberty catholics grew up right alongside of protestants and now they have gained control of the white house and the congress and now our liberties are being taken from us our protestant liberties are being taken from us history is literally repeating itself he says there is a use duinum at the foundation of all good government for what is government but an induction or a codification of the laws and facts of society which too are the ordination of god and there is a use duinum at the in all true theology for what is theology but just an induction of the laws and facts of the bible which are the revelation of god <clears throat> so any good government must be based on good theology it must be based on the bible it must not be based on human tradition it must be based on the divine law not roman catholic canon law it must be based on the scriptures the bible and not the traditions of men it must be based on grace alone through faith alone in christ alone and the scriptures alone not on roman catholic canon law and the decrees of the popes this is elemental in the this is elemental information for christians today true bible believing christians he says and there is a use duinum in all true theology for what is theology but just an induction of the laws and facts of the bible which are the revelation of god the reformation the protestant reformation was a return to the use duinum of god in opposition to the use duinum of man which in fact is nothing else but the use humanum okay the protestant reformation liberated all of society from the tyranny of the popes from roman catholic canon law 
and replaced it with God's holy, eternal, and immutable divine law, and the people were then free, and their governments became free of the tyranny of Rome. Now he says, we are accustomed to say that the doctrine of justification through faith alone is the fundamental principle of the Protestant Reformation. This is true if by the Reformation we simply mean a system of theology standing in contradistinction and opposition to the theology of the Roman Catholic Church. The Reformation stood directly opposed to the Roman Catholic Church. That was the very tenet of Protestantism. It protested the Antichrist. It protested his popes. It protested its law. It protested its doctrines of salvation by works. And it liberated all of Europe. Every nation in Europe that embraced the Protestant Reformation and the Bible was liberated from Roman, from Roman Catholicism, was liberated from the tyrant on the Tiber. He says, we are accustomed to say, and it is true, that the doctrine of justification through faith alone is the fundamental principle of the Reformation. That's what separates us from Rome. We are justified by grace alone through faith alone. Rome has always said you are never justified but by the sacraments and then by confessions and then by indulgences <clears throat> and then by the, the, the intercession of the saints, dead saints, which the Bible forbids. And even then, after you've done all that you can do to save yourself through all the works of the Roman Catholic Church, they tell you you're, not all of your sins are covered and you must go to purgatory and pay off the rest of them. Okay? You see the difference? We are justified by grace, that is, unmerited favor, through faith faith in Jesus Christ who bore our sins upon his body. We no longer stand convicted of our sins. Christ was convicted in our place and he bore our sins on the cross and redeemed us to God. He brought us into full rest restoration to our creator. What do we need a pope for? What do we need a priest for? James A. Wiley is having to remind him his readers at this time. You are courting Rome when it was Rome that destroyed all of society before. Do you wish to return to the bondage of the Pope and give up the grace of God? That's the logic behind what, what James A. Wiley is telling his British friends. <coughs> Excuse me, he says, we are accustomed to say that the doctrine of justification through faith alone is the fundamental principle of the Reformation. This is true if by the Reformation we simply mean a system of theology standing in contradistinction and opposition to the theology of the Roman Church. True Bible Christianity is always opposed to the theology of the Antichrist Church, the synagogue of Satan, the Church of Rome the Roman Catholic Church. Because to be for Christ is to be against his counterpart, his counterfeit in the world. It goes hand in hand. You can't swear that you are an apple tree if the fruit upon your branches are lemons. Our actions are consistent with our words. If we, be for, if we be for Christ, we must be against Antichrist. We'll be back as we continue. You're listening to First Amendment Radio.
Welcome back from the break. You're listening to the second half hour of Inquisition Update on First Amendment Radio. If you wish to support for, uh, Inquisition Update, please support First Amendment Radio, who sponsors the program. And if you'd like to email me, please do so. My email address is tom at seawaves.us. Now, let's be logical. If the governments of the world during the Dark Ages upheld Roman Catholic canon law and suspended God's holy, eternal, and immutable law, his perfect law of liberty, then what did those governments become? Tyrannical and antichrist in nature. And all of Europe was enslaved by it until the Bible set them free. Now, to the degree that those governments upheld Roman Catholic canon law and the papacy, those governments became the enemy of Christ. It became apparent to all Europeans that read the Bible, those governments are not upholding the divine law of God, the jus duinum of God. They are upholding the jus humanum of the Pope. And we now hold the light, the light of the Scripture. We now understand who our King of Kings and Lord of Lords is. And he's no human. And the law of the Pope is his adversary. The Pope is his adversary. And to the degree that the kings of the earth served him and not Christ, they too were the enemies of Christ. And those governments were overthrown. The Bible overthrew them. So what crossroads are we now located? To the degree that the government of the United States has dispensed with the divine law of God and has put in its place, its rightful place in this Protestant land, Roman Catholic canon law, it is in rebellion against God. And it is in rebellion against us, the true governors of this land. And it must be overthrown. Now somebody's going to accuse me of inciting an uprising, a military or a, an armed uprising against our government. I believe Rome is going to force that to happen. But uh, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The weapons of our warfare are spiritual. And it is the juxtaposition of the divine law against the Roman Catholic canon law is the only way you're going to make a people free. That's what happened at the time of the Protestant Reformation. All of a sudden, they had the divine law in their hands, which they had never seen before. And it changed men's hearts. Now, granted, weapons were used. There was chaos that evolved after this. But it was a natural progression of things. The Bible liberated the people's spirits. And all of a sudden, the, the, the laws that, that were in place at the time were incompatible. And those governments just simply had to be removed. In many cases, they removed themselves when the king of the country became Protestant himself. That's how the sword of the Spirit works. It divides the Spirit from the, from the flesh. Okay? It's not bloody. It leaves room for mercy and repentance. But that war... That spiritual war cannot take place until the people of the United States become aware of the spiritual battle that is at the heart of the, the overthrow of our liberty. We have to replace the Bible, the authorized King James Bible, with 
the law of the land, which is Roman Catholic canon law. In a word, we have to have another Protestant Reformation. He says, we are accustomed to say that the doctrine of justification through faith alone is the fundamental principle of the Reformation. Grace through faith, through Christ, through the Scriptures. That is the fundamental principle of the Protestant Reformation. Now he says, this is true if by the Reformation we simply mean a system of theology standing in contradistinction and opposition to the theology of, Roman, of the Roman Church. That's what the fundamental principle of the, of the Protestant Reformation is. A perfect contradistinction and opposition to the theology of the Roman Church. To be for Christ, you must be against Antichrist. That's a fundamental principle of Protestantism. You have to be for the Scripture. You have to be for God's law. You have to be for grace alone as justification. And you have to be against the theology, the Antichrist theology of the Roman Catholic Church. That's where our liberties lie. And if we fail in our, in our natural opposition to the Roman church, she'll dominate. She always has, she always will. Without maintaining the liberty of Christ, Rome will dominate. It's a natural progression. If we will not be ruled by Christ, if we will not be free by Christ, then we will be ruled by Antichrist and we will be enslaved by Antichrist. And this is the very threat that James A. Wiley is talking about to his British co-citizens. It's the exact same position we're in today here in the United States of America. Now he says, but if by the Reformation we mean a great movement extending over in the entire area of human life and action, beginning no doubt in the religious sphere, but developing itself immediately thereafter in the political and the social, a movement enlarging and elevating all the rights and relations of man and communicating new powers and privileges to human society, a movement, in short, which gave us a new state as well as a new church, then we say the fundamental principle of the Protestant Reformation was the substitution of a divine for a human authority. Now, don't be confused. His last phrase was ambiguous. He's going to clarify it in the next precede, in the, in the succeeding sentence. But what he said was the Protestant Reformation restored Christ and dispensed with that human counterfeit. I don't want my listeners to miss this, and I hate to be repetitious, but this is, this is, this is understanding. He says, this is true if by the Reformation we simply mean a system of theology standing in contradistinction and opposition to the theology of the Roman Church. That's what the Reformation is. And it is also this. It's a great movement extending over an entire area of human life and action, beginning, no doubt, in the religious sphere, but developing itself immediately thereafter in the political and social. A movement enlarging and elevating all the rights and relations of man and communicating new powers and privileges to human society, a movement, in short, which gave us a new state as well as a new church. Then we say the fundamental principle of the Reformation was the substitution of a divine for a human authority. The divine authority was Christ, 
the human authority was Antichrist. That's what the Protestant Reformation replaced. And it affected every stratum of human society. The world that grew out of the Protestant Reformation was unrecognizable to the old world order of things. So it had a real and tangible effect on the world. And it's one that Rome has envied ever since the Protestant Reformation. It is one that Rome has coveted, unable to duplicate in any Roman Catholic country. It made the Protestant Reformation the shining light of all the world. And it was in comparison side by side with the dark tyranny of the papacy. The Protestant nations glowed in radiance compared to the darkness of the Roman Catholic Church, those who were still held in subservience to the man of sin. It's what made America great. You see, there are those who say that the United States had been Catholic from the very beginning. That's a lie. America is free. America is prosperous. America is... Uh, advanced because of the liberty whereby Christ hath made us free. It is Catholics who have had to grow up in the, in the midst of a Protestant liberty. And it is the Catholics of this country that are trying to put us back in darkness. Shall we let the light of liberty be darkened in this country? That's what James A. Wiley is saying to his co-religionist in Britain at the time of the writing of this book. America was not Catholic from the beginning. To say that, Ro that America was Catholic from the beginning is to award Rome with all, the, with all the advancements this society has brought to the world. It, it contradicts everything we've ever learned in the Bible and in history and everything else. I stand condemned by those who say that Rome has controlled this country from the beginning. But let me tell you, they are wrong. To say that America has been Catholic from the beginning is to say that this free country that this advanced country was this advancement and this freedom came from Rome. It didn't. It came from the Protestant Reformation. Rome has had to live in the presence of liberty in this country. It has had to live in the presence of Protestantism. It has had to govern its time. It has had to be very careful and cautious to proceed lightly so as not to rile up the Protestants in this nation. But to the degree that the United States is falling now, to the degree that, that Americans are losing their rights, both Catholic and, and Protestant, Catholic and Christian, that's correct, because there is a difference. To the degree that we are now fitting the mold of the old world order, to the degree that tyranny now reigns in this world, Protestantism has been overthrown. It was not Catholic from the beginning. You defy your own wisdom when you say this country was Catholic from the beginning. You defy your own wisdom. You cannot understand what's happening in this country today if you say that Rome has controlled it from the beginning. This country is being destroyed because it was a glowing example of Protestantism in the world. And now its government serves the Pope, not the people. That's what we learned from the Global Vatican by Ambassador Francis Rooney. 
Rome controls both foreign and domestic policy in this country now. Now we're seeing the cancer and the killing of this country because it, now it's becoming Catholic. The Protestants surrendered at Vatican Council too. The Protestants signed the documents of capitulation to Rome at Vatican Council II in 1965. And since then, this country has been taken over. The government of this country has been taken over by Roman Catholicism. The Protestants have lain down the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. And the, and the, Roman, the Roman tyrant on the Tiber has trampled all over it with his feet. Roman Catholics are now free to dictate the laws of this land with no Protestant opposition. This is the very thing that James A. Wiley was fearing at the time of the writing of this book. It is a reality in the United States today. Not 200 years ago, today. Because 200 years ago, this country was Protestant. You defy your own wisdom when you say this country was Catholic from the beginning. Oh, yes, Rome had her inroads. For heaven's sake, she claimed this whole entire Western Hemisphere because Christopher Columbus came here in the name of the Pope to conquer the West for the papacy. And because of the, 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 phony, the phony donation of Constantine, which is now widely understood and believed to be, fo be, be a forgery, and the pseudo Isidorian decretals, the Pope said he had, well, he was king of kings and lord of lords, that he owned the air, the water, the land, the sea, everything. And he simply was out, out to add the West to his jurisdiction. Does that mean a whit to a Bible-believing Christian who knows that God created the heavens and the earth? It doesn't mean a whit to me. I'm not going to lay down to Rome. I'm going to stand up and claim this country for God. Not the Pope. How can I inspire God's people in this world to stand up for Christ Stand up for the scriptures when I have to tell them without being condemned, for, for fear of being condemned by my co-religionists that the United States was Catholic from the beginning. It was Protestant from the beginning. It was God's from the beginning. And it will be God's forever. The tyrant on the Tiber is a phony. He's just as phony as his donation of Constantine, his pseudo Isidorian decretals, his Roman Catholic canon law, his Mariolatry, his simony, his sodomy, and every other thing about the Pope. How can I encourage God's people to use the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, when my cohorts are out telling that this country was Catholic from the beginning. Are you part of the Counter-Reformation? Are you part of the Counter-Reformation? How dare you condemn me for what I'm doing? How dare you condemn James A. Wiley for what he's trying to do in Great Britain at the time of the writing of this book? Christopher Columbus had no claim to this country. Neither did... Francis and Isabella, neither did Pope Alexander VI. This country was created by God. It is his lock, stock, and barrel, and I'm going to operate on that basis. I'm going to operate on the basis that Protestantism is built on the Word of God, the very God that created this heaven and earth, and no other God belongs here. No other God is to be regarded by God's people. Now it's one thing to acknowledge Rome's activities in this country. It's quite another to lay down and to imply directly or indirectly, subtly or otherwise, 
that this country was Catholic from the beginning. You go against the Scripture. The earth is mine and the fullness thereof, God said in his word. I'm not going to let some human usurper overthrow that. We are accustomed to say, says James A. Wiley, that the doctrine of justification through faith alone is the funda fundamental principle of the Reformation. This is true if by the Reformation we simply mean a system of theology standing in direct contradiction to the Church of Rome. But if, the Reformation, but if by the Reformation we mean a great movement extending over an entire area of human life and action, beginning no doubt in the religious sphere, but developing itself immediately thereafter in the political and social, a movement enlarging and elevating the rights and relations of man and communicating new powers and privileges to human society, a movement in short which gave us a new state, that's, what, that's the state we got fr from our founding, a free state, a new state. We got a new state as well as a new church because of the Protestant Reformation. And then we say the foundational, the fundamental principle of the Reformation was the substitution of the divine for a human authority. That's the liberty. We replaced Antichrist with Jesus Christ. That's why our state was new, because it was Protestant. That's why Antichrist Pope Pius IX wrote his encyclical and syllabus of error condemning every tenet of our Protestant constitutional republic. Would he have condemned it if it had been Roman Catholic from the beginning? No. He condemned it because it was Protestant. He condemned it because it had thrown off his authority for Christ's. That's why he condemned it. And to the degree that the Pope has overthrown God's rightful throne in this country, I condemn him. But it was Protestant in the beginning. He says this principle is first in order. We have substituted the Pope for Jesus Christ. We have substituted the Roman Catholic canon law for the perfect law of God. That law which Jesus obeyed even to the jot and the tittle. That law which made Jesus Christ the perfect and unspotted Lamb of Almighty God. That should be the law in every heart of every American, every Protestant American in this country because that's the only way you're going to find justification to be opposed to Rome. It's whoever you regard as the ultimate lawgiver. And when you believe that God is the only legitimate lawgiver in the world, that his law is the very throne upon which he sits, only then can you understand what Roman Catholic canon law is. And that's the only way you can understand that your government has overthrown God's law and has made Roman Catholic canon law its foundation. And the reason Protestants don't fight today is because they don't protest. They don't know the difference between God's law and Roman Catholic canon law when they see it side by side. James A. Wiley did, and so did the Britons at the time of the writing of this book. They knew the difference between the jus duvinum and the jus humanum. Who's going to be your lawgiver? Whose law are you going to obey? It's as simple as that. They got a new state as well as a new church because of the Protestant Reformation. They threw away the old Roman Catholic Church. They got the body of Christ. The set-aside ones. Holy and acceptable unto God. And naturally, they got a new state. The state had to be overthrown. Just as Rome has overthrown the legitimate government of this country, the Protestant government, it must be overthrown if we're going to have another Protestant Reformation. If there's any hope for liberty in this country, we have to overthrow this rebellious government. 
It has rebelled against God, our Creator. It has rebelled against the body of Christ that gave it its power in the first place. It now serves Rome. And if we can't overthrow it with the sword of the Spirit, then God will overthrow it with the sword. Whichever way He chooses is fine with me. I hope I've set the record straight to my co-religionists. And I beg the patience of my listeners. I'll see you tomorrow on Inquisition Update.